Next to you? Nope. Nope, because I'll just set it right on that. Uh-oh. I think we're going live, probably. It's probably time for the live stream. Looks like we're in process. All right. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Third Space Coffee Break again on a beautiful Thursday. Actually, a little bit cooler. So. Oh, wonderfully cooler. And I'm I'm um, having trouble moving my eyes back and forth. The camera's a little higher today. We wanted you to be able to see the table. So forgive me if I'm looking down at the laptop for comments. But welcome. We're always so glad to be with you on Thursday mornings. We have our... Just lattes one single shot uh lattes i had made a discovery this week um i i absolutely love coffee so i'm a hardcore coffee drinker but i do not like super strong coffee no matter how much i drink coffee i've never developed a taste for super strong coffee and um i i tend to drink my coffee without sweeteners and things like that in it so i i like the the taste of just a milder taste of of, of rich coffee and um, I discovered this week as I was making myself a plain latte, I prefer uh, my lattes with a single shot. We do here at Third Space, we base all of our lattes and all of our drinks on double shots, which is what most people would prefer. Um, so we give you, you know, the best that we can give you here. But I actually found that I prefer a single shot. So Dan is drinking a single shot. What do you think? Yes. Well, it's great. It's and <clears throat> we already had our first cup of coffee this morning, we confess. <laughs> So <laughs> couldn't wait this time. We, wait this we time. could have done another cup of coffee, but decided just a, a single, sing, shot. single shot. And latte. how good, tell me how good it is really. Like, do you really like the latte? Is it really delicious? Um, it is, it is very good. I guess when you're used to just coffee, I wouldn't want to replace it with that, but I'm just curious because the truth is I hijacked Dan's coffee and made it with soy milk. This is a soy milk latte. Hmm. And all of a sudden he's not swallowing. He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just joking. It's, it's not that bad. No, it's, it's good. So. I think it's actually quite tasty. I'm not necessarily advocating soy milk uh, in your drinks. I think it's great to have dairy. I actually think it's better with dairy, but yeah, um, I actually, I don't mind the soy milk. So, yep. So we had our fundraiser mm -hmm. on Saturday. Yes, we did. Which turned out very well oh we had so much fun we had two big canopies set up in the parking lot some outside seating under those canopies we um we had a table just outside on our patio yeah that was for the pre-order so everyone that came in didn't even have to go into the building they just picked up their uh, their their pre-ordered cinnamon rolls right there. And we uh, had the a couple of people languishing out there in the sun because, oh, it was so hot yes. on Saturday. It was so hot. I, I pretty much was out there the full day. I probably should have doubled up on my deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> it was a sweat fest, let me tell you. I really felt it for the people that were holding down the fort in our pre-order table right here on the front in our patio area because it was very, very hot. Yeah. Fortunately, they had an umbrella to give themselves a little bit of shade, and we tried to trade out with people and get yeah. them indoors as much as we could. But we saw some old friends. We did. It was and really it was fun, so, actually. It was so fun, and we had a good time just um, prepping and preparing and being together as a team and working toward uh, how can we you know, get this space opened up again, which was really, really neat. Uh, we hope you loved your cinnamon buns. Um, we hope they were... Uh, we, we loved ours. We right. definitely took a couple home. Yeah. <laughs> and they were delicious. We, we thought did. so. Yeah. But we're yeah. biased. We love them. So. Well, good, good morning, morning, Joyce and Wendy. Hey, good well, to see you. Welcome good to, see to see you. the coffee break. So, yeah. So, overall, the fundraiser was, was uh, just a beautiful, wonderful day. Uh, and we did well. So, we have a, we have a meeting today uh, with our team. And the, t the, the whole point of this meeting is like a dreaming session. We're just going to dream what is the best way <clears throat> to utilize third space, the environment, the space itself, to utilize our equipment and to utilize our team's availability and gifts to do ministry mm -hmm. and to uh, become accessible to the community. Yes. So we'll be able to tell you more after tonight's meeting really hoping that we uh you know we just have a lot of great ideas come forth able to talk through a lot of stuff and uh, be yeah. a little bit closer to a solution for what we're going to do we are so appreciative of how patient everybody has been 
uh, with us getting third space open. I do uh, just really appreciate everybody's dedication to us. We want so much to get this space open again um, so that people can be here. We feel so blessed by this space. Anytime I'm here, I'm always amazed just at, I just feel the presence of the Lord here. It's just such a, a calming space and it's been such a gift. So we want to get it back open again to the public. And I see more people are hopping onto the live stream. It is so good to see you on the call today, or on the call on the live stream today. And um, yeah, so hopefully, um, uh, like I said, the dreaming session was tonight, as Dan was saying. Yeah. Um, next week, uh, there will be no live stream. We have a multitude of conflicting events, uh, personal events, one of which is just facilitating some time away for Dan to, to think and ponder, uh, which is an important part of being a leader. So um, we're going to not live stream next week, but the week after that, we will be back. Um, and we hope to be able to give you some kind of an update of where we're heading at that point. Yeah. So that's the plan right now. And so as you're thinking, and we would ask if you're willing to pray for us, because we are very much seeking the Lord's will here, wanting to be available to what he wants. This morning, I was actually just praying for us in uh, Proverbs 16, 19. The Lord really brought that to my mind as I was praying in the uh, verses. The, the heart of a man plans his way, but the Lord establishes his steps. And so that is our prayer as we go forth, not only that he would give us his heart for the ministry and heart for this space, right. but that he would establish our steps. Yeah, that was uh, Proverbs 16.9, but Oh, I'm yes. sorry, 16.9, I apologize, thank no, you. Did you good. have anything you wanna add? Uh, no, I, I'm just kind of looking forward to this meeting and, uh, and then as Angie said next week, hoping to get away, just a little bit of a prayer retreat. Um, if that doesn't happen, maybe we will yeah have the coffee break but otherwise uh don't plan on it so yeah so but we are looking forward to being back and getting in touch with everybody yep, giving you that week. update and i see gary's on good morning gary i see a couple other people are hopping on just good morning to everybody yeah, good morning and we appreciate you letting us chatter for a minute while we just pick up a little bit of steam with our live stream um but yeah so we're looking forward to what's coming yeah Woohoo. yeah so how many of you uh do things have done things uh, with your kids that you weren't 100% sure you were going to really be interested in. But did it just to bless them? Just to... Just to, to spend time with them, you know? Yeah. So my oldest son, he works at a hobby shop, and he's really into model railroading. I've never been able to get into model railroading. I don't... I don't know... It's I a just, very meticulous craft. Yeah, I just... I, I haven't had the... I don't know, the drive, the energy. I, Anyways, uh, it requires a good bit of time and stuff too. But he also is starting to get into these RC cars. He calls it rock crawling. Now, these aren't just typical RC cars, you know, remote control cars um, that you buy from Walmart. These are pretty sophisticated machines that can uh, go over hurdles. They climb. They climb. <laughs> they, they go, it's incredible. They can go through creeks. Uh, I mean, these completely are completely waterproof. And he was so getting into this. He actually built his own and uh, really wanted me to get into it. And uh, I I don't know that I, I necessarily wanted to. I, I kind of was intrigued, I guess. I, I will say that a little bit. But anyway, so I went to White Rose Hobby Shop where he worked the day he was working. And he was all excited, you know, to be able to show me the stuff. And, and so he... Yeah, so I picked out a, an RC car. and He so, must be quite a salesman because Dan came home with an RC car. I came home with an <laughs> RC car and um, not, didn't want to spend the money on it, but I figured the money is well spent if uh, it affords me time uh, to spend with my, my oldest son. And, Absolutely. And I think it will. We'll, be go, we'll go. These are like, they're called uh, trail cars too. So you take them actually on trails. In the woods. In the think, woods. And think you, stumps and logs and rocks and streams think the wild and like the tundra and yep. that's where you and that's it, where you take these right and they just go ahead of you so like mine goes like uh can go up to 30 miles an hour so i mean they're not just yeah they're not your typical rc they're they're pretty pretty uh it was pretty, pretty, pretty fun stuff. yeah our, it was our fun little, taking our little it guy outside. is actually quite intrigued as well so funny yeah. our youngest son has autism so um you know it is has a, a specific niche of things that he enjoys. He was particularly, I think, intrigued by the RC cars as well, which is kind of a neat thing yeah. um, that maybe it's something that the boys yep. could, could do together. So, yep. But that has nothing to do with third space, but just <laughs> kind of what's going on 
with us? Yeah, that was just a good general question, though, because we aren't, you know, what do, you, what do we do for fun? Everybody has things that we do to unwind, to enjoy our family and our friends. And nurturing relationships is the yeah. heart and soul, is one of the heart, of, of heartbeat of Third Space. We really want to foster good fellowship and healthy communities here. And, um, yeah, so relationship building is important. I love that you spend time investing in our kids. Yes. You're a good so, dad. I'm saying it out loud well, to the public. You're, he's a wonderful dad, so. Maybe. <laughs> he is, she's, really. She's a little biased. No, well, I just think you're a really good dad. So anyways, I won't beat that. We'll, we won't All belabor right. that point. But that's what we've been up to. And is there anything else about Third Space before we dive into our recipe of the day? Because I always try to bring you guys something um, that if you like to be in the kitchen that you can enjoy. Because I love to be in the kitchen. So Yeah, I don't know that there is too much about Third Space. We've been... If, if anyone has suggestions for a person that knows uh, about sound, mm. uh, we have been trying to, the room that we're in, the cafe area, we've been trying to figure out the best way to use this space uh, when we have groups meeting during the week and we're on Zoom with, with those that are not in person here. So what happens is everybody that's in this space does fine hearing each other, but those that are on Zoom, they struggle. They struggle to hear what we're saying. We have a, I bought a hundred dollar mic that's supposed to be a good conference mic, but it just does not pick up people unless they're really close to the mic itself. So I'm thinking we need some type of condenser mics hanging from the ceilings or something to. Anyways. This is a new age where we yes. oftentimes are working with some people in person, some people on Zoom. Um, and so this is a, a hurdle that I don't think we ever anticipated when we opened up Third Space, one we gladly want to, to deal with well because we want people to be able to be a part of what's going on at Third Space, even yeah. if they are not comfortable being here in person. So we want to tackle this, but it has been a bigger challenge, I think, than we initially thought it might be. Yeah, and we have uh, a couple of different groups. We, our ladies group has really been growing. Mm. So, yeah, so I just want to make the space both a digital and in-person space that works really well for both, yeah. whether you're here or on Zoom. So absolutely, we have uh, two other groups that are going to meet that meet in this space as well, other than the ladies' groups. So, yeah. and who knows what else we'll be able to do in this space once we have it correctly wired for for sound. So, yeah. so anyways, if you know someone that knows what they're doing or can suggest some things to try, let me know. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm just going to make mention of this in case anybody is interested. Um, as you know, Third Space is an open, open, but we're still doing, actively doing uh, Common Ground Ministry out of the building. Uh, you know about our uh, community dinners every uh, Sunday at 5. Uh, we are here, um, and you know you are more than welcome to join us. As we're waiting and figuring out how to determine what you know the best way to move forward with the cafe, we'll you know again have an announcement about that in a couple of weeks. Um, but uh, what, what I was, wanted to let you know about, I'm sorry, I was just reading a comment on the screen. What I wanted to let you know about was that um, I am opening up this building, not, not Third Space, but just Common Ground is available from four to five every afternoon, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, no Tuesdays, just Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday from four to five, especially if there are any women in the community that are interested in just making a connection. We just are here, uh, it's just me and, and if Pastor Sandy's available, we just come here and we, we sit and we encourage each other and we welcome anybody that wants to just come in and have a conversation. And they can order a drink off the They can order a drink, everything's by donation right now, we're just working off donations. Uh, but you know, it, I'm here and I'm happy to barista. So you know, if, if you do want a drink, you're certainly welcome to come in. But just it's a, it's a time for connection. And you know, if you need yeah. prayer, if you're if you're feeling isolated with all this COVID stuff, um, you know, just just know that you're welcome. And do you want to tell them more about our groups, uh, other yeah, groups available? Yeah, Ken, Ken suggested online here that we mentioned the the day and time. So we have our ladies group, which meets Tuesdays at one o'clock. This coming Tuesday, however, is going to be at noon. So it's just a slight change, but after that, it will revert back to 1 o'clock. We have a men's group that meets Wednesdays at 7 p.m. And then we have a Thursday group, which is just anybody and everybody that wants to be a part of that. Uh, and that is at 6.30 Yes. Yes. So, and if you're interested in the Zoom links... Just reach out to us. We can get you the Zoom links if you 
prefer yeah. not to be here in person so yeah we'll put an email link into this uh, conversation thread later just so that you they know where to contact us if they need information about groups we'll make sure that that link gets posted and I see Matthew's on good morning Matthew we are so glad to see you on the live stream so um, yeah. yeah anyways uh, so we'll just We'll, we'll make sure you have the links, but feel free to reach out because we are here, even though Third Space is an open, Common Ground is here, and we want to meet with you um, if there's any way we can connect, so. Yeah, okay, so okay. on to Angel Food Cake. All right, all right, I guess that's my signal. So, yes. um, hey, so I try to bring you guys a recipe every week, um, and I try to bring you something that maybe you might not be as comfortable with. I'm gonna set my coffee back here for the moment. So I'm doing Angel Food Cake today because it is one of the easiest cakes um, to make and the difference between a homemade angel food and a store-bought angel food cake or a box mix angel food cake is astronomical so if you love angel food cake I would strongly encourage you to try to make your own if you've never done it I know when I was a kid I was always told angel food cake was really hard to make and that is not the case so um, and this is a good time of year for angel food cake because you can put fruit we love the fruit put with the fruit angel food it. so as you're getting your your fresh berries and things like that a little bit of fresh cream and angel food is lovely when I was trying to decide what recipe to make today I mentioned something about options to my 17 year old and he said you absolutely should make angel food because I want to eat it all so I'm making angel food and I'm going to take the cake home for him to eat but the first thing I want to tell you you do need a stand mixer angel food's easy to make but it is um, a little bit more time consuming which is what I think uh, what is the deterrent for most people so I have my uh, handy dandy KitchenAid mixer but any stand mixer will work you just want to make sure your bowl is nice and clean because we're making meringue and you want to use this sort of an attachment this is a whipping beating attachment so we're gonna go ahead and attach this and all we do to start an angel food cake is we need to get beautiful meringue to make the cake that we want to make. I have in this bowl already, I have 12 uh, eggs that I have taken the whites out of. I and mean, if you're not somebody, if you're intimidated by uh, removing yolk, uh, it's really an easy process. So all you need to do... I'm intimidated by cooking, period. <laughs> all you need to do is we're going to start to crack our egg like this. And all I do is I'm going to open my egg up and I'm gonna to start to pour off the white and I'm gonna just kinda of put the yolk back and forth using the shell and it's just gonna help all the white to drop out. And that was it, that is all it takes uh, to, to remove the white. Um, there are all kinds of contraptions that you can buy at the store to get this process done. I think it's just as easy to do it this way. I've seen people use uh, empty water bottles to like kind of squeeze and suck the yolk off of the egg. You can do that too, but I think this is just as easy personally. And um, these shells, to be honest with you, are so darn convenient because let's be honest, everybody breaks a shell and gets it into their white every so often. If you do and you lose a little piece of shell, use another piece of shell to fish it out. The sharp edges of this make it so easy to dig that out of there. So we're gonna start our angel food cake. Whoa, wanna throw that in the trash for me? Yes. Normally I would try to use my yolks for something. That little guy I'm just gonna dispose of. Okay, so I've got my 13 egg yolks, or excuse me, egg whites. Boy, I'm already messing up this morning. 13 egg whites. I have a little bit of salt. And this is cream of tartar. This is what's gonna make us a beautiful deep meringue. It's gonna really help it to lift. If you don't know what cream of tartar is, uh, this is actually a byproduct of wine making, but it really helps to stabilize um, meringues and eggs. It's gonna really help you to get a good lift. So we're gonna go ahead and put the cream of tartar in here. And I'm gonna lift this guy up and I'm gonna start mixing. Now this is where I'm gonna to have to start talking loud because I feel like the mixture is probably gonna cause me some troubles here. Um, but we're just gonna to start to beat in the salt and a cream of tartar and get this moving. Okay, so while that's getting started, I wanna talk about a couple other things you'll need to make angel food, um, which is not much. We needed eggs, cream of tartar, salt, sugar, flour, and a couple of extracts, that's all that we need. I do have an angel food pan here, and this is what an angel food pan looks like. It's not a bunt cake pan. It actually has a piece that comes out of the, the middle part here. Um, you do not need to ever grease an angel food cake pan. These need to be uh, completely dry, and that is how you bake an angel food. You don't want any sort of grease in this, so just dry and clean, and I'm ready to rock and roll. Um, angel food cake pans oftentimes historically have these little uh, feet that kind of stick up off of them. It's like a little piece of, of metal that sticks up because you do want to cool your angel food cakes inverted. It does help them to retain their, their lift and their shape. If you have a cake pan like mine that does not have those little feet on it, 
You can also put a bottle right down in here and flip your cake over like this to cool, all right? Uh, or you can use coffee mugs or anything else to flip your cake over when it's done. So my eggs are starting to get a little bit frothy. I'm gonna start shaking a little bit of sugar down into my meringue. And I'm gonna take this, uh, this is about three quarters of a cup of sugar, and I'm just gonna slowly shake it in increments into this, and it's gonna start to make that nice stiff meringue that we're looking for. All right, I'm gonna bump this up a little bit. It's about to get really loud in here, guys. I'm shake a little bit more in here. All right, we're starting to take off. And hopefully y'all can still hear me okay. I'm gonna go ahead and take some other steps on uh, making my angel food while I'm waiting for this meringue to come up to some nice stiff peaks. Um, I have another clean bowl right here. And to my bowl, I am going to go ahead and add three quarters of a cup plus two tablespoons of sugar and one cup of flour. That's all it takes for this cake. Got a little bit left in there. And my mixer is shaking the whole table. It's like rocking and rolling over here. And I'm just gonna use a whisk and I'm gonna mix these things together. Now we won't need this until the very end, but this is a nice sugar and flour combination that we're gonna fold into the mixture at the very, very end. All right. And then the only other thing that you need to make an angel food cake taste really amazing is some extracts. So I have two teaspoons um, of extracts that I like in angel food. Personally speaking, I like a classic combination. I have a teaspoon of vanilla and a teaspoon of almond extract. I think it's a classic uh, angel food flavor, but you can mix and match that to whatever you like. But two teaspoons of extract is the perfect amount for this cake. All right. I'm gonna bring this up just a little bit. Bit more sugar. See, if I were Tim the Toolman Taylor, I would add power to that mixer <laughs> and it would be done in half the time. Well, it's coming up nicely, and I think if you made it too much, we'd end up with air bubbles the size of King Kong in our mixture. This whole table is rocking, it's actually making me laugh. I think it's going to knock over all my bowls. I'm going to move them behind me here. All right. So, um, just a couple other notes on angel food um, while we're waiting for our meringue to come up here. Um, the things that you can use angel food to take for, like Dan was saying, it's a great time for angel food because we have a lot of fresh fruit and berries. Um, one of the classic ways to use it as like a strawberry shortcake base. Um, so instead of using a biscuit, if you want to do something lighter, because angel food cake does not have any fat in it at all because it's only using egg whites. So, um, it is something, a, a, a lighter way to get that uh, strawberry shortcake base and it's great with that. Another thing you can do with it is uh, use puddings uh, inside of an angel food cake. My mother, when I was a kid, used to bake an angel food cake, cut the top off of it, and tunnel out all the cake pieces on the inside. And she would take those pieces of cake and toss them with pudding and, and Cool Whip and stuff it all back inside the cake, put the top of the cake back on, and frost it with like Cool Whip. It is an awesome, awesome summer dessert. So there's a lot of things you can do with it. So how long do we actually leave this thing run for? Oh, we're getting there. We're almost there. So is there no way to do this without a mixer? I think you'd be awful tired. So the whole point is we are whipping air into these uh, whites and we want to get them nice and big. This is why I think people say that making an angel food is so hard. It's actually not hard to make. It just takes a minute. So we're getting close, but we want to get uh, the uh, meringue up to like a, a stiff peak. We want it to actually get some good lift and we're, we're pretty close to there. So if we wanted a good workout, oh, yeah. we could just mix up angel food every day. We just wouldn't want to eat it every day or that might uh, nullify the workout. Yeah, well, at least you're eating something that's not full of fat. Right, there you go. And uh, although the sh you do have a sugar load with this, so I can't help you with that. The only other thing I was going to say at the beginning that I forgot to tell you, if you lose a little bit of your yolk when you're doing your, your whites and getting them ready at the beginning of the angel food cake, don't worry about it if you get a little bit of yolk in here. That's another myth. People think if you're making meringue and you have a little bit of yolk in there, it whips up just fine. It's not going to inhibit your angel food cake at all, so don't worry about it. All right, so let's check this. 
where we're at. Oh, peace and quiet. Dan loves the sound of my mixer. Sometimes I really get, <laughs> get it to going. All right. So we're almost there. So I don't know if you can see very well from here. I've got a nice tip, but notice it doesn't really stay up. So we just need to whip this for like another minute, I think, and we'll I, be ready. I would ready. probably have to pull that camera close for you to, and to see that. All right. Well, we'll just... Which I could do. I'll show them in a minute. I'm not quite there. All right. We need one more minute. Really high. Plug your ears, everybody. We're making a lot of noise today. I'm going to finish my coffee while I'm waiting this last minute. Does anybody ever make angel food? Is this something that people are comfortable making or is it just, I, I really, I've heard so many people my entire life tell me that they can't make homemade angel food. So I'd love to debunk that theory. Does anybody actually make angel food already and they found it to be simple as I have? I'm curious your thoughts. I think this is definitely the most complicated recipe we've done yet. Really? Okay, I think so. Or at least the longest. Long, yes. Complicated, no. We have some egg whites, some cream of tartar, some salt, and some sugar in here. And we're beating it. Uh, it all looks complicated to me. <laughs> you, you had me a cake, but you lost me when you started putting ingredients together. <laughs> Let's see where we're at. Now, this looks great, all guys. Right. This is perfect. Okay. So, do you want me to try bringing the camera closer? So, I'm going to just lift this up. If you see what's happening here with my mixer blade. Let me go closer. Okay. All right, you're good. All right, we got it. You got me right there. You're good. You're going to have a tired arm. But if I pull my mixer back, you see I have a nice stiff peak here, and it's holding shape. When I turn it, it's not collapsing. This is what I want. And all this is is probably, what, maybe five, seven minutes we did total. And we just beat sugar, cream of tartar, and a little salt and egg whites together, and we just beat it to death. That's all you got to do. You want to hang that back up, or is your arm going to fall off? I don't know that I'm going to get it hung back up now that I did that. <laughs> well, you're in trouble because I got one more thing to do. All, All right. right, so we've got our ingredients here. I'm going to shake over my extracts. I'm going to pour those right over the top. And we just need to start folding. The trick is here, we want to get this flour sugar mixture incorporated, but we do not want to be beating this. We want this to be just folded together. So I've got my extracts, and I put just a little bit of the mixture in here. And I'm going to start folding. And, hun, why don't you try to find a way to stabilize that camera so your arm's not falling off while I'm mixing? I'm okay. okay. I'm showing them the mixing. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm going about a third of a t at a time with my flour sugar mixture, folding this in. I'm just kind of mixing through lightly with my spatula, mixing this in. You have to excuse my marvelous camera work here you're doing just fine all right and that is it so all we have to do now is just keep folding this a little bit we want to make sure we don't have big glops of flour anywhere in the cake and this is just going to bake right in to these egg whites it's going to make a fluffy and beautifully delicious angel food i'm telling you if you only have ever had store-bought angel food you have not lived this is completely different than anything you can get at the store and mountains of times better than box mix and it's not that hard to make and everybody likely has the ingredients in their house it's possible that you might not have prima tartar but it's cheap and easy to buy you can buy it for 99 cents from walmart so it's about as cheap and easy as you can get all right now just about got this incorporated making sure i don't have any big streams of flour in the middle and i don't see any I've got my dry, not greased, ungreased angel food cake pan. And I'm gonna just pour my batter off. I'm gonna kinda put it all the way around here. Turn my pan a little bit. Oh, and I found a patch of flour. Way to go, Angie. I broke my own rule. Gotta make sure you don't have big clumps of flour anywhere. Get the rest of this batter off. How's your arm holding up, dear? Um, well, it's holding the camera up for the most time being, but. <laughs> All right. We have a nice, fluffy handful of beautiful mix. I'm going to take a, a just a, a regular butter knife and I'm going to just kind of spread this out. You want to watch out for air bubbles. So you want to kind of take and run your knife down through everything, making sure you don't have big air bubbles anywhere in there. And then I'm just going to take and smooth out the top. 
and this is ready to be baked. We bake it at 375 degrees for about 35 minutes until it is nice and deep golden brown. Remember to invert your cake while it cools. It will help it uh, to retain its shape so that the uh, egg mixture does not collapse because until it cools completely, this cake can collapse. So you just wanna be a little bit ginger with it. And that is all there is to it. And just remember that when it's time to cut this cake out of the pan, you're gonna to need to run a knife around the edges of the pan and you're gonna be able to pull the cake out that way, okay? So if you have questions about how to unmold this lovely creation, let me know in the comments, but do try to make a homemade angel food. It will change your view of angel food forever. Thanks right. for your patience. It was a longer episode today. It was. I hope you enjoy it. All right, we'll see everyone. Bye. Peace to you.